Good morning. Working. Uh, thank you to uh, the Alliance for the opportunity to, uh, to talk about TrackCell today and our cellular orchestration platform. Um, before I jump right into it, I'd like to, to really discuss the heritage and talk about TrackCell and, and our history. Uh, the seeds for this company were, were sown over a decade ago by uh, a company called Biotech International that was responsible for uh, delivery of therapies to hundreds of patients throughout the world. Uh, up probably 12, 13 years ago, they started uh, doing so. And they were very early in that process when they recognized that really this wasn't going to scale. This industry, if it was ever going to grow, needed a digital solution. Um, about five years ago, we started seeing early growth in the industry and the acceptance of cloud computing. So it was a confluence of, of market growth and, and the acceptance of cloud computing in the life sciences that really was the, the starting point. They said, right, let's, let's do this. So the board members there founded TrackCell, provided the funding to, to get the business up and running. So, and it was a very, it's been a very exciting journey. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to say I've been there from the start. Uh, within, within three to four months of, of really starting, we, we engaged with, with GlaxoSmithKline and have worked with them to this day. So a fabulous collaboration partner that really gave us some fantastic insights into what it is that Big Pharma wants to see from an information perspective to allow them the comfort to know that these therapies are being delivered. So I'll, I'll just walk you through some of the, the capability of our, our technology. We'll do a little bit of background first to, to understand the challenges. Um, the past 24 months have proven to be a turning point for cell and gene therapies. We witnessed exceptional results coming out of clinical trials and uh, big pharma's continuing appetite to invest. So we are now entering into the next pivotal period where we've got to deliver these. So all of this wonderful science that we're seeing this morning in the last couple of days, ultimately for this industry to work, it's got to be delivered. We've got to deliver it to patients uh, safely. And what, is that, what, is that, what does it look like, really? What does delivery look like? Well, it's, it's uniquely challenging. But we can't really compare this to small molecules, to large molecules, biologics. We've got a, a supply chain that is complex, it's very disparate, and ultimately it's going to be global. So areas such as kit logistics, surgical excision, right through to, to manufacturing and ultimately back to the patient. Now I won't delve into this in any great detail, but I, I think it's worth perhaps pointing out some of the challenges here. Ultimately, today you look at some of the, the seminal work coming out of UPenn, it's, it's one shot on goal for leukemia. Some of these kids are, are just really not, not going to be around to, to suffer through a second apheresis. You know, we, don't, we don't have time. Um, we've got to scale out and scale up, so you know, single manufacturing sites ultimately won't deliver on a global basis. Equally, the logistics challenge, outbound and inbound, it's, it's all got to be dealt with within a very stringent regulatory framework. And that means chain of custody, chain of identity, process standardization, and complete traceability end-to-end -end on a global basis. So just take a look at a couple of examples here. So we, we talk about the medical center and the requirements, the requirements there. We talk about just the cell collection, the process of, from the point you take the apheresis as an example, the, the labeling challenges, the orchestration requirements. Every, every person involved in this supply chain needs SOPs. They need to be orchestrated. They need management. Equally, this is the labeling challenge. I mean, it, it seems minor, but unless you're tasked with doing it, uh, you probably won't understand the absolute and total complexity of labeling alone. Um, equally, cell collection, the communication with your supply chain partners. You know, you need people here, you, you need the right containers, the collection kits, all of that, all of that information and data and, and SOPs related to it. And as you step through that supply chain, you've got transit logistics. We need to make sure that these cells uh, uh, retain or maintain temperature, um, we can't have any excursions, the labeling within manufacturing. We we're working with a client today here in, in California whose production process spans circa six, eight weeks. There's 77 different labels involved in manufacturing and that's an, that's an al allergen matched allogeneic therapy. So it's quite, it's quite astounding or frightening really. 
Within manufacturing alone, you've got companies like Invitec who are generating, automating the, the manufacturing process, but they're also generating reams and reams of data that ultimately needs to be part of the, the uh, chain of custody and electronic batch record at the end. Um, Miltenyi, likewise, another company that we work, we work closely with. All of this data is being generated in all of these disparate silos. Storage is an example. Again, labeling challenges, more data. So as soon as you got to the end and your, your product is ready, it's, you've got to go right back through that. So you're generating reams and reams or megabytes or gigabytes of data per patient. And coordinating all of this, the people and the processes, is ultimately critical to your success, as is integrating all of the data sources. It's a huge challenge, and it needs to be appreciated and understood, I think. So if we step back a decade now, nearly, this is um, the FDA's response to, to Dendrion for their Provenge uh, product. And I think, I mean, it's an 80-page document. I've just picked out two paragraphs that I think are probably highly relevant here, because really what's changed, I think, before Traxel, the world hadn't really moved on. I fundamentally believe that. But just to, just to read that out, the major challenge is not in the manufacturing protocol. This is, this is a relatively simple procedure. Uh, logistics is the challenging aspect due to the shelf life of both the incoming apheresis units and the final product. So uh, some of you won't agree that manufacturing is not the, the major challenge, but many of you uh, will understand that delivery is is ultimately what this industry is all about. So given the tight manufacturing schedule, short process time limitations, overlapping schedules, QC testing, complex shipping situations, it will be difficult to generate this product at high throughput without substantial attention paid to coordinating and orchestrating these events. So that's, that's our, reason for, our reason for being today, is to answer the challenge that uh, companies like Dendrion faced, as I say, over a decade ago. So now the critical factor for, for all of you is, is really choosing a strategy, technologies and partners that can deliver this scale. Some will be, many of you will be familiar with the, the stacks of paperwork. I visited clients three, four years ago and they had more space dedicated to storage of paper than they had to, to uh, manufacturing. I won't really go into this. I mean, managing at any scale using paper is is risk. I think we'll, we'll leave it at that. But four, three, four years ago, there was still people looking at this thinking, hey, we can do this on paper. Really, we can't. You can't. Um, so, so where do you go from there? So I think everybody's moved on. Okay, we need, we need to do this with technology. We need to digitize the, the supply chain. So typically, we're seeing this off-the-shelf approach. So we're going out there, picking our electronic document management system, our electronic quality management system, electronic data capture, ISPT128 labeling technology, our ERP, and uh, even if you're not in tech, all of these names will be familiar. Oh, we need the ERP, we need the QMS, we need this, we need that, the other. And there's a bunch of names or go-to brands at the industry or that any IT department would naturally elevate to, the likes of Oracle, SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, and so on. That's all very well, but I think... <laughs> It's important to understand what it means. It's not as simple as going out, licensing all this technology, and plugging it all together and hoping it will work. You can go and spend a half a million dollars with Oracle, and you'll get a license agreement. The reality is it's a virtual system. There's nothing done for you. You've got to go there. You've got to create all the table structures, all the design elements. You've got to do all the work yourself. Oracle is not going to do it for you. Um, and equally, these systems don't fit together out of the box. So you've got, okay, we've got our TrackWise, or we've got our SAP, or we've got our whatever it might be. You just created disparate data silos, ultimately, until you bring all of that together, and it's huge, hugely challenging. I've been doing this for far too many years to, to even recall, but uh, it's, it's a huge challenge. And all of these systems, ultimately, are data hungry. You've got to get the data into them. And as soon as you start talking about our enterprise technology that's ready for our supply chain, you're going to find your IT department are coming in going, yeah, okay, but what about distributed access? How, how do we how do you allow all of these disparate service chain partners to access our enterprise technology? That ain't going to happen. Security is a huge concern, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's hugely challenging just to open up these technologies, even on cloud-driven technologies, to, to disparate supply chain partners. So what we're seeing now, in many cases, is, is people going, well, fill it in on paper, fax it back to us, or email, and we'll rekey it. Duplicated data entry, transcription errors, all of that stuff. So 
you know, be aware of this promise of seamless integration if you go down this route. I think the other area, of course, is in-house. Okay, we'll do it ourselves. Well, <laughs> it'll cost you upwards of $15 million. This data, that, that's pretty much the cost you're going to pay. It's going to take you three years to deliver this platform. And this is, this is not based on an opinion. This is based on fact. And if we look down there, a filing from Dendrion a decade ago, they had made, um, they had set aside $9.2 million in 2009 for this, so it's just frighteningly expensive. And you need a whole new set of skills in the business to go down this route, cloud, mobile, tablet, database, security, APIs, regulatory, 21 CFR part 11, EMA, Udralex, all of that good stuff. And I'm sure when your investors came in and invested in your business to develop these amazing therapies, they didn't realize they were investing in a software business. So it really is a huge distraction to go down this route. So introducing Traxel on that basis, as I say, we've got a long history and a great heritage in delivery. And Traxel's COP, or cellular orchestration platform, is designed from the ground up for cell therapy. It's, it's a unique uh, platform, and it provides a centralized platform for program critical information, for collating, tracking, documenting, and routing data. So you can still have your QMS and your ERP and all of these things, but we route the data into that for you. We provide a very friendly interface to all your supply chain partners. Everybody works together, but all of this data is being managed and available in real time. So I'm running out of time here. I've got three minutes. I'm going to have to do this pretty, pretty quickly. It was described recently by one of our clients as a control tower. He said, I love this. He said, it's my control tower over our global um, delivery. So I'm just going to very quickly walk you through some of, the, some of the capability and the design model and the common language that we use when we're building this system. We don't talk about technology. We talk your language, the lingua franca of this industry, which is process development and process management notation. So this is an example, a demo example, albeit of the level of detail that Traxel can manage both people, processes, and devices at. So, you know, this is designed visually. We sit down with you, we take your process maps, and we implement your system. We don't write a line of code. As soon as this is deployed, that's it. This is how the system manages your entire global network, including your service chain partners. And complexity is not a challenge for us either. You know, if we walk through there, we can see uh, at a very high level, we've got a subject registration, we've got a CMO facility selection, so maybe you're using CMOs, multiple CMOs, maybe you're doing it in-house. Again, the processes that we design for you will reflect all of that. Cell collection, cell therapy. Any depth of clinical or manufacturing complexity is supported, really. And you've got off-the-shelf features like, oh, when that happens, at apheresis, I need an email sent to manufacturing, I need you to do an inventory check through the ERP to make sure we've got consumables, reagents. All of that. The CFO might need to know when we've treated the patient because it's his opportunity to generate uh, an invoice. So whatever it might be, there's something in here for everybody. Um, needle to needle visibility. So, in terms of off the shelf, we don't sit down with a blank sheet of paper. Typ typically, if it's an autologous or an allogeneic product, we have a set of procedures that we drag into the system to get you started, and things like patient registration or apheresis, and there's hundreds of these uh, available. So drag and drop, you can go, right, zoom out, that pretty much looks like our process. It's drilling in and right into the minute, the minutia that allows you to tailor the system exactly as you require. Um, again, milestones, you can drop milestones in anywhere, and that's on a per patient basis. So everything we're looking at here is, is on a per patient basis. Um, electronic batch records, documents, labeling, event log, drilling in there, you can see pretty much everything that happens in real time. We can see a task was completed. We simply verified a patient label. We printed that label. We created electronic sub-records for all of that. So it's all real time. You can sit there in your control tower and understand explicitly what's going on wherever it's going on anywhere in the world. Another good example here is the event log. So we uploaded a document, temp results. So typically working with a temp tail as an example for monitoring temperature. When that comes in, you plug it in and upload those results. We can manage that. But everything that happens, you've got instant access to it. 
uh, labeling, integrated labeling. So you don't have to go off and find another, another labeling system, or you don't have to pre-generate 78 labels in, in advance and ship them to all of these different locations. It's all done in real time. And it's state-of-the-art technology, so it's a very simple user interface. You know, you've got customized logins, you've got personalized task lists. So you log in, you'll have a list of those tasks that you have to do as your part of this complex delivery process. A good example there is just simple purification uh, exercise within manufacturing. And here we're talking to your ERP, we're pulling down the various elements, we're scanning them, we're checking batch lot serial numbers, we're updating inventory and stock levels reorder levels at the same time. So it, it really is designed, it's a, it's a beautifully simple design. You know, it's, we've taken the, the Apple approach, I guess, here in that respect. So finally, and uh, I'm running out of time here, the, the Traxel partner ecosystem. No one company can do this themselves. Uh, that would be hubris to believe that that, would, that were the case. So today, we are at the heart of a rapidly evolving ecosystem of supply chain partners who understand your challenges and are we're committed to utilizing the latest technology to orchestrate the entire delivery process on your behalf. And we will continue to add best-in-class partners. So the likes of Milteni Biotech, World Courier, Biologistics, Cryoport, Biocision, Automated Manufacturing in Japan, Tokyo Electron, Yokogawa on the MES side. So, you know, there's world-leading businesses and names you're all familiar with, but all part of this ecosystem that we're creating to allow you to deliver. So, summary, final slide, I promise. Traxel and our COP is the efficient way to streamline delivery. It removes much of the duplicated data entry and operational overhead. That saves you time and money and improves data quality. And it can be implemented in months, not years, and it's very cost effective. I, I, I always ask myself this question, what if Dendrion had access to Traxel today? And you go back a decade, if they, they had access to this technology, it would have been a different story. I like to think it would be. And you know, this, this whole design-driven implementation, the design language, the approach to the partner network, it's resonating right across this industry. You know, today we're onboarding companies um, at every market tier, from big pharma, I've talked about GSK, the mid-caps, uh, multi-billion dollar mid-caps, you know, some of those in the CAR-T race, um, government public funded, publicly funded organizations such as the Catapults, and venture-funded startups the likes of Autolus, again working on CAR-T, a spin-out from, um, from UCL in the UK. So, it was a very, very short, sharp shock, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs>